all the data collected on board the robot in RAM. Um, but we decided that this is not the way to go because uh, if we were to go that way, it would uh, take up a lot of memory um, in our robot uh, in RAM. So because of that, we would have to add more RAM to our robot, which would add to the cost. Um, our robot already costs a lot, so uh, we, we want to avoid extra cost. Um, another uh, reason we decided not to go this way is because we would have to add more software, um, and that would add to the complexity of our design. And uh, if we add to the complexity, then we go over our schedule uh, deliver delivery date. Um, Another alternative design we have was to have it stair climbing or non-stair climbing. And the reason for this, uh, to have it stair climbing, was so that it would be able to uh, maneuver in all types of terrain. Um, as you can see, uh, this robot right here was the original design that we wanted to go with. And you can see this part right here is uh, sort of like a flipper um, for the robot. So uh, whenever it would go up to the stair, uh, the top part would basically push itself up and then it would drive up and then keep on going and so forth. Uh, until it gets to the top. Um, and this, the stair climbing ability of it is not just limited to stair climbing. It can be in all types of terrain, like I said. Uh, if there were rocks, uh, bushes, all kinds of things, it'd be able to maneuver through all that with these slippers. Um, the reason we decided not to go this way, uh, main reason uh, was because of cost. Uh, you would have to buy more motors, more tracks, uh, and implement it and uh, all that. So it would add to our cost. Also, it would add to the complexity. We would have to add a program a lot more um, to get this to work. Uh, and one of the very one of the main reasons we decided not to go this way is because it would take up a lot of power, a lot more power. Um, and if we have more power, we would need more batteries, and more batteries would add more weight. Um, and a key deliverable we had was to have uh, our robot easily portable. Um, and that's because the soldiers will be carrying this around the field, and we want them um, not to struggle while they're uh, carrying the robot. Um, another uh, reason we decided not to go this way is because of the mechanical aspect of the robot. Uh, we, as electrical engineers, lack <coughs> mechanical engineering ability to uh, implement this into our robot. Um, so we decided uh, overall to go with the non-stair climbing approach, and that's this design right here. Another one, uh, our turn design we had was whether to have uh, a remote with an LCD on the, uh, the remote or whether to have a, a laptop uh, GUI. We decided, the reason we wanted a remote with LCD was because it would make it more portable. And for soldiers, that's uh, what they want, easy portability. Um, so we decided that the laptop was the better way to go um, instead of the LCD because first off, the LCD, if we were to do that, we'd have to buy it those are not cheap, uh, which should add to the cost. Uh, also, uh, the, the GUI um, makes it easier to uh, take in the data. The data. Uh, so we decided to, um, with, the, with the GUI, we would have a continuous stream of data, and that data would be fed into LabVIEW. Um, and LabVIEW has many, many tools, a lot of tools that we can use to analyze all this data and output it and customize it for the user's needs. So for example, if a user wanted uh, um, to see radiation in a certain area, we can output all types of graphs about the radiation as uh, compared, compared to if we want, uh, if a user wants to just find bombs, we can output uh, graphs to uh, find the different bombs uh, and the radiation and all that, the bomb levels. Um, so, I'm going to pass it to LaHare, and she's going to talk about the risk reduction. Thank you, Sam. As we all know that projects are difficult and risky, as we all can see here too, but we are going to perform the job of this guy right here, <laughs> and we will definitely get through these risks. So, but why are projects risky? Projects are risky because they are unique, and they have everything new included to it. To it. Um, so, like for the projects which are unique, they're going to have new work group, new customers, new products, new product design, almost everything new. So almost all projects have different kind of risks. But now we are going to see what kind of risks we are currently facing. We are currently facing these three risks 
financial risk, performance risk, and legal risk. Um, the financial risk currently we are facing is just because um, we don't have enough financial resources, and our project estimated cost is going over 2,000. And um, we can probably increase the risk if we uh, damage the parts we're going to use, and uh, it can also increase the risk if we are if the prices of the uh, parts we're going to buy increases. So in order to solve this problem, we'll be applying for some of the scholarships and government funding. We'll also be talking to some of the private contractors, and we'll be asking them if they're interested in our project and if they can help us out. The second risk we are currently facing is performance risk. We are doing good design-wise, but we don't have enough testing methodology available. So um, this is the thing why we cannot test the performance for the robot. But uh, we will be talking to our chemistry department here in UT Austin, and we have seen that they have a bunch of research groups that are working on sensor arrays, and they can probably help us out. They are also encouraging uh, interdisciplinary project, so we are expecting positive feedback from them. Um, we have done some of our research on our own, and we have found this beta piping. It's a specimen of uh, uranium ore, and it's helpful to test micro cameras. Radio cameras are the devices that can um, detect radio activity. So this is one of the things which can help us out in here. The third and the last risk we are facing is legal risk because we are worried about uh, some of the other designs that are already exist in the market. There are a lot of companies that are currently working on the robots, creating new robots every day. But in order to reduce this risk, we'll be definitely researching all around. We'll be uh, <coughs> using a lot of open source software in hardware design. We'll try to keep our design unique, and we'll do research and research more to reduce this risk right here. So at this point, do you think our design is feasible? Yes, our design is definitely feasible because we have done a lot of changes to make it feasible. We turned from semi-autonomous to autonomous. We um, it was like a, a stair climbing robot, but now it's non-stair climbing. We were trying to use uh, WPAN technology, but now we're using Wi-Fi. So we have major changes to make our design feasible. Um, do we think we have enough time? We definitely have enough time. Um, we'll be getting this thing done by May 2011. We have like five engineers working on it, and uh, everyone has different expertise, so we'll definitely get this thing done. Um, do we even have any risk? Yes, we do have these risks, but these are like future issues. We can definitely avoid them by working hard towards them. Um, now I'm going to pass to Cassie. She's going to conclude it for us. Okay.